Nashville. Welcome back to Entertainment Circle. I am Sheila Paz, and I am going to move this forward a little bit, and I'm going to start a watch party on my iPad, and and also, I forgot, as always, to turn down the volume. Um, anyways, welcome back to Entertainment Circle. Bienvenidos de regreso a Entertainment Circle. Yo soy Sheila Paz, y hoy estaré hablando de viajes. Sí, sí, sí. We're going to talk travel today. But before I, am, I invite into the broadcast my dear friend, I want to show you a little bit of her speech at a convention about your dreams. So let's see. I'm going to hit play over here. And I hope that you can all but hear this. Filling that dream is not easy all the time, right? Um, it's difficult. Uh, this shit's hard. I don't know if anybody knows this, but it's kind of hard owning your... Who agrees with me? It's okay. I, they told me I'm allowed to swear on stage. They're kind of used to me by now, right? Right, Mary Pat? Absolutely. So the shit is hard. You're going to get some obstacles. You're going to have some disappointments. You're going to have um, people who aren't believers in you. You're going to have a lot of unknowns. A lot of challenges, and the worst is you're going to have those stupid naysayers in your life. Who's got a naysayer in their life that's like, what are you thinking about? What are you doing? Who's got a naysayer? They will bust your dream faster than anybody else. Hate the naysayers. We've all had it. And I remember there was one naysayer in my life many, many years ago that almost change the trajectory of my life. Have you ever heard that statement, that comment, that like, you have like one particular moment in time that if you make the right decision, you're going to go the right way, the correct way. If you make the wrong decision, it's a completely different life. Have you ever heard that before? Have you seen that before in your own lives? This is an interactive situation. You get to say yes. <laughs> There's bright light. So I want to share a, a quick story with you. Um, I'm 54. Okay, let's let's her tell that story, what she was about to tell, because it's better that she tell the story than the video tell the story. Please welcome one of my greatest mentor, a friend, the vice president of Travel Planners International, Jen Lee. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi, Shayla. Oh, my goodness. It just reminds me how much I need to burn that dress. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> you were just bright and yellow. That was all. Oh, and you're so, always so bright and so beautiful Aww. and always encouraging everybody with great messages. And you had a great message of uh, pursuing your dream uh, yeah. in this video. And what was the story that you were about to share there? So I was, um, I had never been a cheerleader, um, even though it's kind of surprised everybody, but I had never been a cheerleader in my life. And my mom thought it would be a good idea for me to try out for cheerleading in eighth grade. And I live here in Orlando, Florida, where the majority of the cheerleaders, by the time you're in eighth grade, you've been a cheerleader for like, you know, since kindergarten, right? So I decided to go for it and I and I practiced really hard and you know through the summer and everything and I was ready to try out for cheerleading and I was sitting on the sidewalk there getting ready to call my name and I'll never forget this this girl sitting next to me her name was Jill I mean my name was next and she um turned and looked at me and she's like are you going to go up there like that and I was like like what she goes you don't shave your legs and so it freaked <laughs> me out absolutely freaked me out. Then they called my name and then I got up there and I flubbed it and I didn't make cheerleading. But the, the and I'm abbreviating the story, but the, the, the premise was that it was something that I sort of kind of wanted. And then I realized I really wanted it. And she was a naysayer. Um, and everybody else was as well, because I had not been part of that cheerleading crew for all those years. I was kind of a newcomer coming onto the scene. And then I practiced every single day for the entire rest of the year. And uh, one of my neighbors was a senior, a varsity cheerleader. And she uh, kind of coached me a little bit and told me that I could do it if I really, really wanted it. And um, I've always kept that in mind. And uh, sure enough, uh, when we tried out for ninth grade, which was the big leagues in high school, 
Jenly was a cheerleader. So um, it's really about understanding what you really want and um, being committed to making it happen. And the rest is just logistics and determination. So um, I'm glad you remembered that. It's one of my favorite stories. Uh, and it's, I've, I've used it still to this day. That is one of my favorite speeches you have done. I no, watch it over and over um, because you're such a um, inspiration and you always try to give us the right message of how to keep moving forward. Your mm -hmm. new message this year is moving fiercely forward. What does that yep. mean? You know, it's interesting. We came out with that message in November um, at Cruise World where uh, Shayla was because uh, she's a rock star travel advisor and agency owner. And um, we came out with it because, you know, it was times were great. Things were doing really great. But even in great times, people found themselves nervous to jump into the travel industry or, you know, not sure where to go once they were in it, um, afraid to maybe niche or to focus. And so we just said you have to go fiercely forward, which is very different than waking up every single day and doing your job or going through the motions. Fiercely forward is kind of like you're letting your fear behind you and it's kind of pushing you forward. Like you have to go forward every single moment um, and not let anything deter you. Um, so, you know, there's definitely gonna be times where it's not a good day and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but you know, how do you, how do you pick yourself up and just say, I gotta keep moving forward. I gotta keep moving forward. And so Fiercely Forward, we came out with it in November and my goodness, how appropriate is it now? Uh, now we're in June, how appropriate is now um, that our, our industry and our country, quite frankly, needs to continue to move fiercely forward and, and let everything behind us be behind us and just let it fuel us. Yes, That's what it means. A, yes such an appropriate uh, uh, like a slogan for this time because you cannot stay stuck. You got to keep no. moving. You got to keep learning and taking this time. You know, at the beginning when this started, I said, uh, I wrote a blog and I sent it out a newsletter and some people replied back saying, what a great message. What a great newsletter, because mm -hmm. I was giving advice on how to take this time to do the things that you always wanted to do, but you couldn't do it because you didn't have enough time. You didn't have enough time with your kids. You didn't have enough time for the home project and all these different things that we always say, oh, only if I had the time. Well, now mm -hmm. you have the time, take advantage mm -hmm. of it and keep moving forward with it. Yeah. So this is just the best line ever. And thank you yeah. for that. Oh, you're welcome. It was a team effort at TPI. We uh, always do things together, but uh, you're welcome. I, I love it. It's so true. And it doesn't really matter what industry you're in or even even just in your personal life. Um, if you can adopt that attitude, you'll find a way. I always say once you're committed to making something happen, um, the rest is just logistics. It's about making good moves, smart moves. Exactly. Well, and talking about a smart move, that's a nice lead in for my next question. <laughs> what, can, <laughs> what kind of smart move do people need to make now moving forward into booking travel? How can we get people traveling again, safely mm -hmm. and smarter? Yeah, you know, um, the word safe is a really tough word for us to say in any industry. So I'm going to take the word safe out of it because Safety is relevant, really. It really, what how you feel safe, Shayla, is very different um, than how I feel safe. What we're finding is um, there are clients out there, consumers, families, honeymoon couples, um, solo travelers, um, people who wanted to cel celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary, their 50th birthday, uh, their kid's 15th birthday. Um, there's all these celebrations and milestones that um, basically have been stolen from us. And I like to say that it's a very tough way to say it, but it has really been ripped out from underneath our feet. And uh, without our permission, without our permission, we want to travel. Um, I'm not sure who all um, listens to this, but I know for sure Americans love to travel. People love to connect. And the joy that comes from being able to get out of your home, out of your little neighborhood, out of your city, and go visit a different culture. And that could just be from going from Florida to Georgia. It's a different culture in Georgia or from North Carolina to Michigan. It's a different culture or going to another country. 
Um, and so we like to um, we we like to enjoy that. That's why we watch more than one TV show. That's why we don't eat the same thing on our uh, for breakfast every single day, lunch and dinner. We like variety. We want to get to know those things, and we like the opportunity that travel um, gives us with regards to spending quality time with those that we're traveling with or with new people that we're meeting along the way. So with that being said, what's happened is there are groups of people that feel like I've been cheated by golly and I want to get my vacation back, but they're not sure what that should look like. And what does it look like financially? What does it look like from, you know, how they may feel um, more um, secure in traveling, um, you know, more free in their travel experience. And then there's others that are like, I don't care. I'll go anywhere. I just want something to open up because Shayla, you know, right? Like every time we turn around, we're like, please, please let the ship sail. Canada, open up. I mean, come on. So, you know, we're ready to rock and roll now. And then there's those that are feeling guilty that they want to travel and they're almost being pressured, um, almost shamed. It's kind of like the mask, no mask thing, right? Like they're being shamed into wanting to leave their homes. So I would say all, with all three contingencies, no matter where you fall on that, um, now more than ever, it is important for you to connect with a travel advisor. Um, travel advisors are the only ones that know all the ins and outs of what's happening out there by region, by state, by location, by hotel, by ship, by whatever it is, they're on top of all of it. And they're also the best ones to determine uh, what's the best package for you, what's the best combination um, for you. So first off, figure out, I would say kind of a three-step process, kind of figure out, do you want to do like a staycation, like close to home? You just want to go away for one night just so that you feel like you can get away? Or do you want to do like a statecation where you're just kind of maybe going to your neighboring state, maybe three, four hour drive? Or are you ready to hop on an airplane and uh, go somewhere, whether it be within the United States or outside of the United States? I would kind of determine uh, what is going to make you feel most fulfilled and least stressed. Um, along the way yeah no, and no more stress. Yeah. No, yeah, stress. No, stress. no stress and that's why it's so important to to hire the services of a travel advisor yeah. and um, one thing is clear that I don't think that people I don't know if they will but uh the the people who like to plan their own travel and go online and look at the prices and what is it that they need to look for to to avoid uh, not getting um, screw over uh, <laughs> with their money. <laughs> yeah. Especially because there are a lot of people that lost their money in, uh, during mm -hmm. all the cancellations. Sure. You know, if they want to go online to dream, I mean, they always say uh, online is for, uh, oh, darn it, I just forgot the saying. It's like <laughs> online for looking and travel advisors for booking. That's what they say. Okay. There, there you go. So here's the thing that a lot of people don't realize that if you're you're if you see that a resort online is open, let's just say for August, um, that's all you're going to know until it's closed. When you work for a tr when you work with a travel advisor, they usually know before the consumers know because they see trends of things with other suppliers or other destinations that may get kind of give you a heads up. So in today's world, I would absolutely positively not book anything online. Um, and plus, it doesn't cost you anything more to use a travel advisor. And many times, travel advisors have um, options and um, access to things that you won't see online. But um, if you did it online, you're not going to know until everybody else knows. And then you trying to call in to make those changes. Um, and also, um, I do know this to be true. Most people don't read all the T's and C's, all that little fine print. So you may think that you've got yourself covered uh, when in reality you don't. Again, working with a travel advisor, they understand all those T's and C's. They're trained to make sure they look at all those details. So what we found was um, when all of this started to happen, those that had booked, uh, even booking.com went out of business. Like those that booked wow. online, people who went to Costco and used Costco. And let's, let me, let's be honest. Costco, you have some great deals. You, you know, most travel advisors cannot give you a $750 gift card if you book a cruise with them. They've got great deals. 
But what we found out was that many, many consumers lost the window of opportunity to make the change without penalty because they were on hold for eight and nine hours because Costco call center could not handle it. Um, wow. When you work, when you work with a travel, and there's a very real story. When you work with a travel advisor, you just call your travel advisor, and actually, they know already, and they're already taking care of you. So, you know, there's a. I'm I'm pretty pro travel advisor, um, and I do a lot of online shopping, but I read reviews, you know, for like my other stuff, vases yeah. and pictures and stuff like that. But quite frankly, when I really want to decorate a room, I call an interior designer. I can pick yeah. out a picture. I can do that, but. They know best where, you know, they know things that I don't know. That's so true. And if you're watching, I know there are several people watching on my watch party right now. If you have any questions, Hi. please pop in and ask questions and Jen will answer for you. I know that she may have all the answers. <laughs> that <laughs> I, don't. I don't know if I have all the answers. I certainly don't know how to do my roots. And this is another <laughs> thing, right? I have not had my hair cut or colored in three and a half, four months. I won't even wow. attempt it at home, right? Like people say, well, why don't you just go to the store and get like a box and they've got all these things. But you know what? I don't want to come out looking stupid and I'm not going to take a chance on this hair. And this <laughs> is what blows my mind about people taking chances with their money and their time, rolling the dice, thinking you know what you're doing and, yeah. and you don't, you just don't. That's what a travel advisor is for. So. Yeah, I I haven't colored my hair like in 15, 20 years. So this is all yeah. natural. Yeah. So <laughs> well, sometimes I just, gorgeous. thank you. Sometimes I cut it myself, but I haven't done that or anytime. So we'll see. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I don't have that kind of talent. You can see, look, look, this one hair is like longer than the rest. I don't get it. I have to like push it up. <laughs> <laughs> But so, yeah, I'd love to hear your questions. If you guys want to know where people are going, what are people doing, you know, um, ask away. Yes. Um, so I know that you guys host several conferences throughout the year. Some have been mm -hmm. postponed, some have been uh, canceled. So where, where do you go from here? Are you uh, hosting any conferences? What's going on? Yeah, you know, it is uh, every couple of weeks we reevaluate what we have coming up. And uh, for us, because we support over 4,100 travel advisors across the country and 63 suppliers are preferred with us, hundreds of them um, that we are partnered with. We have to kind of weigh um, where they are in their process. Um, the good news is we've really, over the last three to four weeks, have started to see a massive uptick in travel advisors uh, booking and rebooking their clients, which is great. That's keeping them busy. And we don't want to steal that time away for our conference. Uh, conversely, our suppliers are working really, really hard to come up with whatever that right combination is to be able to uh, make the adjustments that are necessary uh, based on what the CDC is recommending and um, stay afloat, uh, literally stay afloat, keep their ships afloat, keep their hotels open. So, you know, every couple of weeks we take a we take a look. We've had to cancel um, several events and we have some that are scheduled for later this year that we're um, looking at right now. So unfortunately, I can't give a black and white answer because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. <laughs> we just yeah. reevaluate every few weeks. Yeah, you just have to go with the flow, basically. Yeah, yeah. And th you know, that's okay. Um, there's um, video has helped quite a bit. A lot of people are tapping into that. I'm sure those that are listening are doing that to stay in touch with family and friends, um, or, you know, co workers. Uh, for us, we've, we've had to uh, all go home and uh, we're actually able to go back into the office. But 99% of the employees are like, it's kind of good working from home. I'm more productive. I'm less stressed. So video that <laughs> that's good yeah if they have less stress that's what is important you know i mean sure. uh when you have a life full of stress you cannot accomplish as much as you can when you're relaxed and creative uh, mm -hmm. so that's great and i'm glad that you guys are still be able to fun to function guys mm -hmm. dpi is another amazing agency I, and mm -hmm. i am part of the family and mm -hmm. when i met the family i felt so welcome and they made me feel like i am a rock star and that's <laughs> their uh what did you say your tagline yeah um, that's what we call you guys we call y'all rock stars rock stars <laughs> and i love that there is a nice come come on how you say that word come on yeah <laughs> <laughs> I get tongue twister with that That's word. That's okay. I can't speak yes. a word of Spanish, so it's okay. <laughs> well, you can say hola. 
Hola, hola. Oh, yeah, there you go. And you sounded perfect. Um, so how is the situation in the state of Florida? Um, are you guys open for business? For what is, uh, what is going on down in Florida? Yeah, so every county is handling it a little differently. The beaches are open. Um, some of them have abbreviated times. They're all asking you to social distance which is fine because, you know, you don't, there's not too many beaches where you're kind of sitting right next to a complete stranger anyway. Um, so the beaches are open and people are flocking to them. Uh, the Keys, I think, opened yesterday. So there will be lots of people going there. And, and you know, the state of Florida is, is doing well. Disney and Universal Studios, they're all coming out with their openings. Um, I do believe we actually have some advisors at Universal Studios today checking it out. Um, they are all opening over the next couple of weeks, I believe. And, um, you know, there's going to be social distancing there. You're going to have to wear a mask um, at Disney or Universal. And, you know, in all transparency, no That'll way be... in heck. No, I'm not going to do it. That'll be very hot. Um, so is, That'll be very hot interesting. Here and, it will be very interesting. So, um, you know, hopefully that um, we don't see a lot of new COVID cases, of course, with some of the activities that have happened over the last 48 hours. Uh, there might be a spike because people were not practicing social distancing or wearing masks and they were gathering. Um, so hopefully we don't see a spike. Here's the, here's the thing. We need to move forward. Um, we need to, if you are um, of a compromised immune system or if you just don't feel safe leaving your home, stay home. Um, there are plenty of us that do feel safe. We wash our hands. You've got to do the right things. Um, Shayla, I was telling people, I was washing my hands before it was cool to wash your hands. I've been a hand washer for years. So you just have to, you have to make a decision based on your own comfortability. Um, but staying home and staying isolated is actually never going to move us forward. We have to start getting back out there. And, um, here in Orlando, we've got restaurants open. There's, you know, it was 25%. I think it's moving to the next phase of 50%. And, and, and people are just moving forward. They're leaving their homes. They're supporting the businesses. And that's how America works. America works when people work. We do not work when we sit home. That's so, that's so true. That's so true. So, and I am so glad to hear that Disney is starting to open soon. And mm -hmm. that, that will be very interesting to see how people are going to handle that wearing a mask and doing all, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know, because Disney is always so crowded. Uh, yeah. eh, I don't know. We'll see. Well, listen, Disney, they are, they are the, the, what do you call it? The, um, the standard, they're the gold standard when it comes mm -hmm. to crowd control. They are the ones that created all those stations that go back and forth. I mean, they understand movement of individuals, how to move people, large groups of people uh, through a theme park. Uh, with ease and with entertainment along the way. So I'm excited to see what they do. I am not excited to wear a mask though. So just no. <laughs> that's me. Well, that's me. I, I got this one right here. Yes. <laughs> I don't even own one. I don't leave my, if I have to go someplace where they require a mask, they give me one at the door. And I, I really, I just don't go anywhere. That, that's why I haven't got my hair cut because I'm not going to go yeah. until I don't yeah. need to wear a mask. Yeah, I me. haven't I haven't been out at all. I uh you know, just being very cautious and wearing a mask yeah. every now and when I go and uh I I'm really uh excited to get back uh mm -hmm. to normal schedule, but I'm not sure that what is that new normal is gonna be. Yeah. Uh but you know, with what is going on this past weekend in the country and the mm -hmm. riots and all that, all I done. have no idea how it's gonna turn out as far as the numbers with COVID-19 and uh, but we in Tennessee are moving steadily forward yep. so but you and, know. and that's and, and Taylor that's a good point it's like every every region every city every county has a different situation and that's the beauty of the way our system is set up is that the states get to make decisions based on their state not on everybody else's state um, because California has got a heck of a mess going on. And so does New York when it comes to COVID. And so, you know, that's not the same as what's happening maybe in Texas. So um, every state needs to handle it a little differently. I would say that for those that are excited to travel, that want to travel, um, 
2020 would be a really good year for you to travel, even if you wait until September, October, November, December, you know, a little bit later on in the year, because you're going to find the best deals, the best pricing, as well as especially if you like to cruise, or even if you take escorted tours, anything like this, they're going to be limiting the capacity, which means you people who come to Disney, as an example, it's going to be at a much smaller capacity. Believe me, I was born and raised here in Orlando. And um, we we wait for the day, which is one day a year, that Disney's not really super crowded. And it really doesn't ever, it's like a random day. And it's because everyone had to be at work that day. It's like some weird random day throughout the year. But so the cruises are going to be less empty. Um, everything's going to be at a limited capacity. So 2020 is the year to go ahead and take advantage of anything that's out there. Come 2021, that's already booking up. Those are already selling out. There's there's lots of the prime times in 2021 that we're, we're hearing from our advisors that they're having a tough time finding space on certain types of cruise ships for certain itineraries um, and even, you know, certain types of, um, you know, specialty events. So, you know, 2020 would be good if, if you feel up to it, do it. So there are a, a lot of people that are like a last minute booking kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But now um, what we're encouraging people is to book now and travel later. Why yep. is that? Well, because the booking now is where you've got, listen, the, think of it like this. It's kind of it's kind of a simple thing to think about from a business perspective. A business can only stay in business if it's got business, right? Now it doesn't necessarily, so when you book a a piece of travel, whether you book a hotel room, you book a cruise, uh, you book a train ride, which a lot of people are getting uh, on trains this year, which is, I, I, I actually want to go on one now. Like a lot of people are choosing alternative forms of travel. You book an airline ticket. That is a piece of business that the business gets to say, I have a future piece of business. All those future pieces of business help them stay in business. They're able to get um, maybe bridge loans if necessary, or they're able to get um, uh, investments if necessary because they say, look, I've got all this business out there. People want to do business with me. It just is in the future. So booking now helps those businesses stay in business. If we all sit back and wait for somebody else to book the business, there won't be a business there to book with. So it's booking now and travel later. And um, as Shayla, I'm sure can tell you, um, again, travel advisors stay on top of um, cancellation policies, book with confidence policies, almost every supplier out there has them where you can cancel up to 48 hours um, before departure and not be met with any cancellation fees. So, you know, you, you the suppliers are realizing it's kind of that chicken and egg scenario, right? Like they can't launch ships unless people book onto the ships and the ships aren't getting booked because they haven't launched ships. Well, we need you to book so that they can launch the ships so that we can go on vacation, people. <laughs> we need you to go ahead and book now so we can travel later together. Um, and so that's, that's the conundrum. I wrote um, an article, um, Shayla, in Travel Weekly. If they Google it, uh, um, it's time to get this party restarted. Um, I have found, I wrote it really for the travel industry, but if you do Genly Travel Weekly and you'll see it's time to get the party restarted. Um, a lot of business owners that have nothing to do with travel have passed this around um, within their organization uh, to their salespeople, to their executives, uh, for them to kind of, um, it's kind of a, a, a statement, like kind of like being at a seventh grade dance where we're all kind of like standing around the, the rim of the room and everyone's waiting for somebody to be the first person on the dance floor. Uh, we got to get back out on the dance floor. And so um, I encourage you to read that. I, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on that. Um, and so it's a, a you know, I felt good about that. I think we yeah, need this, the Fiercely Forward. Yes, that's great. I just uh, posted it on the chat, uh, the title to uh, Time to Get uh, This Story Restarted there on you Travel go. Weekly. So you guys go out uh, there and read it and uh, share it. And uh, if you have any questions, um, shoot, we're here to answer your question. Um, so who do you think is going to start uh, to like a revert? <laughs> <laughs> Who's first. The first? Yes. Well, um, what the indicators are showing based on booking trends um, is that the luxury market is coming back uh, sooner than any other market. People who have that disposable income um, and the disposable time 
um, who are used to uh, using a particular part of their year to spoil themselves or their loved ones or to rejuvenate themselves in a, in a really meaningful way, that's going to be the first segment to come back. So that could be river cruises, that could be higher end um, ocean liners, it could be higher end resorts, spa resorts, dude ranches, um, doing things that people haven't done uh, in, in, in the past. So national parks, anything outside as well is another trend that we're seeing. Anything that gives people and family a chance to be out. So like the Grand Canyon, the um, um, uh, Grand Teton, those bigger outdoor Wyoming, all the Montana, all those bigger wide open spaces. Um, are coming back already. People are already booking those for sooner for now versus later. So that would probably be the, the, the first thing. Okay, fantastic. I love hearing that. And I hope that people take your advice and go on and start planning to help the yeah. travel advisors, help the travel industry get back on their feet. And uh, what, what about our country? Yeah, to get our country back on its feet. It's not just the travel advisors. Listen, every time um, a, a plane doesn't fly. Just think about if the last time you were on a plane, Shayla, think about all the people that were on that plane, just that one flight, that one segment of that one flight. How many people went and visited a restaurant, a resort, a family member, a business, they closed the business, they had just closed the business, they just buried somebody. They, all the activities that happen every time somebody transports from one destination to another. Because that is not happening, because people are not getting on planes as much as they were before, all those other um, businesses are suffering. So for every plane seat that is empty, there is a dentist that could go out of business. There is a shoe shine company that could go out of business, a dry cleaner. There is a townhome community that could close down. Like people just don't realize that that money, that one person moving from here to here, what it represents for the trickle down effect. So for our country to get back on its feet and also, uh, you know, travel is one of the things that um, feeds your soul. It helps you appreciate and understand other humans out there. And, you know, it's, it's possible that we don't understand one another because we're not spending time together right now. We need to spend more time. Travel has always been one of the most impactful things somebody can do for their soul and the soul of the others that they've gone to visit, that they've touched in that new destination. And when they come back, when they come back and how they've changed and how they've transported and how that affects another person. So, you know, to me, this is not about saving businesses, building a pipeline, saving travel advisors. And this is about getting our country back where we need to be, which is integrated with one another, appreciating, and then the world in general. So um, I'm not running for president or anything like that. I just feel firmly that if we don't travel soon, we're going to be in bigger trouble than we are now. That's all. <laughs> that is so true. That is, that is a beautiful statement that you said right there. Uh, just yeah. a second, my husband is talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, husband. <laughs> 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 what the uh, is he going to the store? He's going to the no, store. No, he wants to eat. He's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost done, buddy. <laughs> okay, so um, it's like a domino effect. So yeah. when something falls, when domino falls, everybody falls. So we need yep. to bring all that up. I posted a, an Instagram uh, picture today that we rise by lifting each other up. Yes. So that's what we need to do in these times. We need to rise yes. each other up by giving each other a hand and moving forward. And mm -hmm. I, I'm so thankful that you were able to join me today for this live and uh, giving, giving uh, a, a good word of advice to everybody in America and the world to lift our mm -hmm. spirits and uh, keep moving mm -hmm. forward. Absolutely. Keep Absolutely. moving forward. Firstly, fiercely forward. forward, not just forward, fiercely forward. Well, thank you. I appreciate you inviting me on your beautiful show. You're welcome. Have a wonderful day, and I hope I get to hug you very soon. <laughs> I know, I know. Virtual hugs to you. Virtual Mr. hugs. Mr. Hug. Mwah. Mwah. Love you. Love you too, sweetie. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment on this live and then I try to get back to you or I can get Jen 
uh, to reply to your comments if you have any questions regarding travel. Um, and, uh, you know, we're here to support each other. Have a wonderful day. Uh, tengan que tengan un buen día. Hoy no le dije nada en español. Todo fue en inglés. Lo siento mucho. Pero les recuerdo que mañana en la noche, a las 7 de la noche, estaré haciendo un Facebook Live con eh, Fabián Verne, Claudia Barajas, la doctora Vivi León, Boris Sánchez, Luis Sura, Vero Salcedo y su servidora para darle un mensaje unísono. Así que sintoníceme mañana a las 7 de la noche por aquí, por Entertainment Circle. Desde mi casa a la suya, te digo chao.